In early 2014, there were some catastrophic fires across the Mallee, both in Victoria and South Australia, and a lot of vegetation for not just threatened Mallee birds, but all birds was lost. And a whole group of people got together in Melbourne, experts from universities and both government departments, and we talked about how we might help conserve some of these threatened Mallee birds. And that's, that was when our Threatened Mallee Bird Conservation Action Plan first started, way back in 2014. And since then, we've been progressively moving towards the aim of a translocation for the Mallee emu wrens. It's been pretty scary to watch Mallee emu wrens disappear from South Australia, and with the high risk of them going extinct in other populations, we needed to take action really quickly. To improve our knowledge of the different conservation tools available for Mallee emu wrens, we've custom built aviaries at Monado Zoo. We've been housing Rufus crowned emu wrens in these aviaries as a surrogate species. And from this, we've really been able to learn about the capture, the handling and the transport to enable some of the Mallee emu wren translocations to be taking place. It's pretty incredible that from when we first saw the Mallee emu wrens disappear entirely from South Australia, which was the summer of 2014, that we've been able to translocate emu wrens back to South Australia within four years. So the translocation of these birds was an enormous operation. It involved uh, lots of different people um, uh, from lots of different organisations. Um, we had uh, experts um, from different departments um, from different states. We had scientists and field researchers um, come in and, uh, and join the project. We had an enormous number of volunteers who uh, donated very generously their time to help out on this project. And uh, we also had um, community groups like, like Rotary. Um, they came in and provided um, key logistical help in, um, out in the field and uh, in instances such as transporting birds um, between different areas. There's so many, there were so many factors to this translocation that it required um, really big coordination of effort um, between a whole lot of organisations and getting them on board, getting them all working together to actually achieve the great outcome that we did. In order to complete this translocation, there are a number of steps we had to go through. So firstly, we found out where the best populations of emu wrens were and we knew the, the last strongholds for the, the species are in Murray Sunset National Park and Hadakolkine National Park. So we used this information along with a lot of recent records um, and then we narrowed down our search areas um, to the best spots and using this information we did a lot of walking, a lot of ground truthing uh, to find out where the birds actually were uh, in the field. So once we knew where the best sources were for birds and we knew there were good enough numbers to ensure that we weren't having an impact, we then had to go out and catch the birds. At the source sites we had a number of catch teams that went out each morning to look for and catch the birds and once the birds were caught they were safely stored away in specialised transport boxes um, and they were, were kept in a nice shady spot um, and we were, they were taken back to camp where we processed them, we took a few measurements, um, weighed the birds and put some special markers on them so we could relocate them in the field and know which birds we were seeing. The birds were then transported across the state each box held between one and two emu wrens um, and to safely carry them across uh, through the parks then across the bitumen and then safely into Narcat we had to have people holding the birds very safely so the birds were rested on pillows on people's laps and um, held overnight in, in the Parks and Wildlife office in Lamaru and the birds were transported into Narcat the next day so to ensure the birds were arrived safely in the field, uh, the birds were kept um, fed regularly. So we had a series of crickets uh, and mealworms that were given to the birds uh, periodically throughout the day and the next morning. And once the birds were uh, arrived at Narcat Conservation Park the next day, uh, they were met by a, another team of researchers that were ready to help transport the birds to the most suitable spots for release. Uh, and from there, they were given a, a period of time to get used to their new surroundings. And then once it was time to release them, we opened the doors and just allowed the birds to come out 
uh, on their own and, and find their, their own little patch. So following both translocations, we had um, some researchers come out to Narkat Conservation Park to conduct some surveys to uh, map out where the birds are and also uh, to see uh, which birds we could find and which birds were still in the area. Uh, following both releases, we, we were able to find uh, lots of birds and even more excitingly, uh, following the, the latest release, we found evidence of birds breeding. So we, were, we, we went out in the field one morning and looking for birds and some of the birds were acting really differently, really furtive, really, really secretive. And after further examination of these groups of birds, uh, we even spotted some young that had already fledged. Um, so it didn't take long for the birds to start breeding straight away, setting up a nest and start laying eggs, which is really exciting and such a rewarding experience to be able to see a juvenile Malliemuran with almost no tail uh, out in the field and seeing the parents come back and feed them and just know that you know that they're, they're going to be okay. Now that phase one translocation is complete, we're looking forward to phase two of the Malliemuran translocations. In order to do this, we've we've got to conduct a number of subsequent steps. This includes further analysis of the current data from phase one to confirm that everything um, is, is going well and that it's, it's a suitable release site. We also need to conduct more surveys throughout the source and release sites to ensure that we've got A, adequate populations within the, the source site and adequate sites to release those birds out in the um, release sites. So once we have those two pieces of information, we will also be simultaneously putting our feelers out for funding sources uh, because phase two will be a much more extensive program and require more funding. On behalf of all of us within the Malliemuran translocation team, I want to thank everyone that was involved with this project, all of the partners, all of the volunteers that dedicated many hours out in the fields and every single person behind the scenes pulling all of this together. It's been a fantastic collaborative effort. Thank you.